There's a movement on Wall Street that is gaining momentum by the day. It has gone from just a couple of hundred angry protesters to nearly 2,000 today. And it is not just New York City. Other cities are getting on board this Occupy Wall Street movement. But the question is, does this group have a legitimate message? Well, joining me now to discuss this is Dr. Mark Nason, a history professor at Fordham University. Dr. Nason, thanks for being with us today. Very glad to be here. Okay, so I have to ask you then, just kind of going to the basics, that how does a movement start? Because we talk about the civil rights movement, the labor movement. Is this a movement? Is this what we're seeing? Yes, it is. We have to remember that one of the most important movements in modern American hi history, the student sit-in movement, began with four students at North Carolina A&T University spontaneously deciding to sit in at a lunch counter. And by the time the year was over, 30,000 plus protesters had participated in this movement and desegregated downtown business districts in many cities. So we have a precedent for a movement that starts almost unplanned, unpublicized, that has uh, tremendous uh, historical consequences. Okay, so for the organizational part of it then, there seems to be some similarities then and also bringing in the civil rights movement and possibly even the Tea Party movement because, you know, a lot of folks will say that the Tea Party movement was sparked by a lot of conservatives fed up with what was happening in the Republican Party. But, you know, my question is, though, is this now becoming a political movement? Is this just fed up because of economic conditions? What are some of the factors that led to this? Well, I think the major factor that led up to this is youth unemployment. I've heard many economists talk about college graduates of the last cohort as a lost generation. And let me tell you, I have experienced this firsthand. For the last three years, my urban studies and African American studies graduates from Fordham have been unable to get jobs in their field. They're part of a group of millions of educated young people and ten in this country who can't find jobs. And I think what this occupation is doing is tapping into the anger and frustration of these educated young people. But the other issue is the maldistribution of wealth. While so many people are unemployed and losing their homes, people at the top of the economic system are still minting it. And those are the two issues, massive unemployment and the maldistribution of wealth. And those are two issues that this movement, uh, you know, addresses. Now, you and I were talking about this. You took part in some movements, obviously, yourself, so you know firsthand what it's like to, to be on the front line, so to speak. When you see the way that it's spread over the past couple of weeks, again, starting with a small handful on Wall Street, which some people might have characterized as unemployed writers or actors that just have nothing mm -hmm. better to do than go down and, you know, throw rocks at big banks or something like that, now being spread across the country, is it getting the same kind of feeling that maybe you have experienced yourself in some other movements? Well, I remember the anti-war movement started with a teach-in at the University of Michigan in 1965. Nobody had ever heard of such a thing. And, uh, we, and this teach-in spread to different campuses and bred a lot of discussion and debate, led to small demonstrations, and then by 1967, millions of people were in the streets. But if anybody had told me in 1965 that there would be millions of people in the streets protesting the Vietnam War, I would have said you were crazy. I saw no sign of that in uh, the environment that I was facing. But having gone through that and observed it, I'm not surprised to see this movement take off. Okay, now but, what about this? Now, you, and you look at the organization that they have, which seems to be pretty well coordinated. They've got a, a media relations center down there. They've got food. They've got shelter. They've got uh, quite a bit of an encampment built up on Wall Street. And again, as we've been saying, across the country. But the biggest criticism that I've been hearing and reading about in op-eds and in the coverage that this has been getting in the news is that this group lacks a solid message. Do you see that? Um... I think they don't have a coherent message, but what they are doing is giving voice to a generation that uh, is uh, basically economically superfluous. These are people who are economically no longer needed in this society, even though they're educated, even though they're skilled, and they are making sure they can't be ignored. 
The point is, if this movement gets large enough, elected officials, scholars will have to figure out what to do about it. They are saying, you can't ignore us, we're not disappearing, you won't be able to function normally until you meet our needs. They're they taking what was in the headlines as sound bites and turning it into a reality that can't be ignored. Very quickly, Mark, is this thing gonna grow? Yes, this is just the beginning. It, I, I have never seen as many of my Fordham students involved in something as they are in this movement. There's a Facebook page, Occupy Wall Street Fordham Contingent, which 60 people have signed on to. Students of mine who are theater majors and are on the soccer team were arrested in the Brooklyn Bridge. These are not beatniks and hippies. These are the leaders of tomorrow. And they're involved in this now, so this is only the beginning. The problems are deep. There has never been in my lifetime such a maldistribution of wealth. There has never been so many educated people unemployed and so many working class people losing their homes and losing their hope. We as a society have to do something, and these young people are reminding us that if we don't do something, we're not going to have business as usual. And the developments yet to be seen. Dr. Mark Nason from Fordham University, thank you so much for your insight today. Thank you. Glad to be here.